the lovely Mondeo there. I think it's been owned by someone that doesn't care about Ford's heritage very much though, given the badge. Hello and welcome back to the channel of nonsense. Uh, sorry, it's been a bit quiet on the channel lately. I've just been a bit miserable, but I've decided to cheer myself up by um, coming to Birmingham and the National Exhibition Center because it's a car show. No, 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 it's not a car show. It's a van show. I've come to the commercial vehicle show because you might have noticed on the channel lately, I've decided that I quite like a van and I'm sort of here for work for the day job, but I'm gonna take you along to see all the weird and wonderful stuff that's going on in the world of vans because I kind of think vans are superior to cars in some way. They're a better tool for carrying loads of stuff, whether that's people, families, or uh, bits of wood, electrician supplies and corpses. And uh, I think the van world is a little bit more creative than the car world. So hopefully there's gonna be some nuts conversions, uh, some free food and some opportunities to make bad jokes on YouTube. So yes, this is a van video. I might waffle on about the channel and life in general a bit as well. But I'm gonna go and hop on a shuttle bus and see some commercial vehicles. Oh yeah! You've clicked off already, haven't you? You're expecting cars and a lay-by. This is sort of a lay-by, just one of a million cars in it outside Birmingham. I'm already really glad I came. The car park was 17 pounds. It's worth it just for that, isn't it? I've never had such an expensive car park that I'm gonna be in for about two hours. It's better be worth it. Come on, vans, do me proud. I need 17 pounds worth of value. It was free to get in, to be fair like your mum. I always forget it's about a two day walk from the car park to the NEC, but I'm in. Look, I've got a name badge, I officially exist. Let's go look at some vans and trucks because trucks are a bit more interesting. Haven't got my gimbal, so I feel a bit self-conscious, but I think I've already spotted the best thing here. It's a bright orange Ranger Raptor. Hasn't got a diesel engine anymore, I don't think. It's a good thing. Yeah, so it is new Ranger Raptor, so <laughs> yeah, the 2 litre diesel has gone and in is 3 litre V6 petrol, 285 horsepower and quite a lot of torque and obviously this is based on the new Ranger, it's got these new American style headlights. I drove the diesel one of these loads, I went on the launch of this Morocco of the diesel one, we were jumping over sand dunes, we we're doing all kinds of cool stuff which would definitely break. Uh, most other trucks, but this was hardcore. Um, yes, yeah, 57,000 pounds though, which is a slight sticking point. Also, you can't take that off it because all the extra chassis strengthening, stiffening stuff eats into the payload, uh, so it's no longer VAT qualifying. But yeah, let's uh, take a look around. I didn't expect to see this here. This is probably the most exciting thing we're going to see all day. Uh, I like these because if you're driving them in the UK, they do feel a bit massive, but if a car comes the other way, you can just hoof it up up the verge and drive over whatever animals, children, grannies or sand dunes are in your way and just drive it a bit like a knob. But yeah, it's a cool thing. Hopefully I'll get a chance to have a go in one of these when they come out in the UK. This one's left-hand drive. Uh, inside you've got Ford's new entertainment system with the portrait screen like on the Mustang mach -E. I'll show you that in a minute. Yeah, the theme for this one is definitely orange. You've got orange on the steering wheel, orange on the seat and that is the portrait entertainment system. It looks much like the one in the Mustang mach -E. You've got all your driving modes. Hopefully it's got Baja mode. That's the best one in the old one. Made it very rear wheel drive, very skiddy, and just so much fun to hoon about. And it's gonna be great that we've got loads more power now, because I can't remember what the diesel was, uh, but it could barely pull its own foreskin back. It wasn't very powerful, so that is good. And I think it's got a quiet mode as well, because I guess it's got a bit of a V6 blare from the tailpipes now. Really excited about this, it's cool. I do actually see quite a few of them about. Um, I guess they've come down in price a bit. You've got a couple of mode buttons down there as well. A nice rotary controller as well for your two high, four high, low all wheel drive. Because this is proper off-roader. Um, yeah, proper hoonage machine. Love it. And you've got a little Raptor button on the steering wheel as well. Big manly seats or ladylike seats, depending on uh, how big you are. Handles to get up. Same old gritty um, step plates down here as well. So you can stand on them and uh, survey your kingdom and all the stuff you're about to run over, like the lowly old Ranger over there. But anyway, let's go have a look at some more stuff. Is the normal Ranger looks quite nice actually. Despite the fact the Raptor's uh, <laughs> the sexy eye-catching orange one, this looks pretty nice in white. And these will be absolutely flipping everywhere in the UK. Tradies love them. 
And I guess this will also form the basis of the new Volkswagen Amarok as well, because Ford and Volkswagen are now German-European bedfellows making sexy little American-German trucks, but mostly German. <laughs> this has caught my eye. It might look like a normal Ford Transit Custom, but it's a Transit Custom Trail. And the big deal about these is they're slightly more rugged than your regular Commonwealth Garden Transit Custom. And if you get a manual gearbox, you can actually get limited slip diff on it. So you uh, just wear a bit more grip in off-roady stuff. And you've got the mean Raptor-style Ford grill on it. I'd quite like a passenger version of one of those. I think it's quite cool. Now, usually I come to NEC once a year for Motorcycle Live, the big motorbike show. And I have to say, it's obviously a very different crowd. There's lots of people in suits and smart shoes here who clearly are better at making money than spending it like most motorcyclists. Uh, yeah, I guess there's serious people doing big business deals and buying, you know, oh, I have a hundred of these from a logging business or something like that or I have one of these and put a highway maintenance sticker on the back of it, then sit in lane three of the M40 at two miles an hour and refuse to get out of the way, then beat you up. This is quite cool. It's an automatic snow chain putter on or offer thing. That's really quite cool. Snow goes away, snow goes away, and then when you don't need it, the snow chains flip up out of the way. Don't really need that in Surrey, but it's quite cool. The van show is going well. I've, I've found a car to talk about. It's quite interesting though. It's Chinese, it's an MPV, and it's called the MIFA 9, which uh, kind of sounds like a government program to remove your kneecaps, but it's an all electric MPV. Uh, let's have a closer look before I run out of enthusiasm. So this is made by Maxus, and I think it's been on sale in China for a little while, but it'll do 252-ish miles on a full charge. It's got a 93 kilowatt hour battery. It's about 180 horsepower of electricness. Uh, it's got eight seats though. It's quite big. It's over five meters long. It's two meters wide. And um, styling wise, yeah, it's a bit Star Wars, isn't it? It's, it's kind of got this blunt front end that looks like someone's melted um, Darth Vader's gym pimpsels, but it's quite cool. Let's have a look around the back. Sorry, excuse the jiggliness. Gimbal's in the car. Oh yeah, look at that. Obviously not a huge amount of boot space when you've got all eight seats in place, but uh, yeah, it's interesting. It's not a van. That is sort of, it's a truck. But anyway, let's keep looking for some weird shit. Now I won't lie, I hadn't really heard of Maxus until this morning when one uh, undertook me at 100 miles an hour <laughs> on the M40 driving up here. Uh, but it seems like they make everything. They've got all sorts of panel vans, little, I don't know what those things are called, little sliding door, uh, recreational park emptying vans, pickup trucks, MPVs. I imagine this is one of these brands that has been around for ages and is massively successful in China and is just about to come over here and undercut everyone on price. I mean, it feels like their big thing is autonomous driving and artificial intelligence. There's some brilliant guff over here. We're going to have a quick look at this board. Uh, I think it says this MPV that we just looked at comes with intelligent housekeeping. Oh no, there we go. Industry's first intelligent driving housekeeper which automatically recognizes driver style through data and scene driving. I mean, that sounds like utter twaddle, but you know, it's probably safer than most minivan drivers, isn't it? These portable batteries, quite handy. There's one YouTube channel I love watching, it's a photographer called Thomas Heaton. He's a landscape photographer. He's built an old, an old van, he's converted it himself. And he uses one of these to charge all his cameras and power all his ancillaries overnight so he can go and take beautiful photos and make YouTube videos that are so pretty, I want to cry, even though he's usually getting wet in the Lake District. Yes, I'm finally really happy I found a motorbike. There's a lovely Ducati Multistrada V4S, one of the finest adventure bikes you can buy. In oh, this is the wrong channel, isn't it? This is cars, sorry. These are really good. I had one of these, I was filming it, and my girlfriend went to labor and I had to drive, ride it home at 150 miles an hour to save her and deliver a baby. I didn't deliver it, I took her to hospital and a professional did it. I just deliver the content, but yeah, these are really good. It's got radar cruise control. Yeah, motorbikes are good. Go and check out Tim Rody Rides Motorbikes and Motorpoint, because that's also a good channel with me on it. <laughs> Isn't this video good? There's people doing proper content who have come prepared with tripods and monopods and things. Okay. Not me. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but this is quite a cool, that clamps underneath an open bonnet and you've got a massive light bar to shine down into your engine. That's probably a really good thing if you do mechanics YouTubing as well as fixing, fixing things for a living.
It's quite cool. Someone's left their snot rags in there. Yeah, that's pretty easy. It would fit to anything, wouldn't it? Yeah. Might get one of those from a closet. LEVC are here. They're the people that make the new black cabs in London, all electric. And there's clearly now a sliding door panel van version of it as well. It does make me slightly sad because one of their main service centres was opposite the Drive Tribe office. Um, and clearly it's not there anymore. But yeah, this is the Ultima. Look at that. Oh, yes. It's not going to focus. There you go. The Ultima version of this. That was one of my favourite RPG series on PC in the early 90s. Well, I probably shouldn't go into that. Someone's phoning me. Look at these nuts. I keep filming things that aren't van. Sorry, this isn't going very well for a van video, is it? But look, there's an Ineos Grenadier. Um, they are both prototypes, the two that are here. But this one looks more finished. I was actually just chatting to a guy I work with who's ordered one of these. They're 52 grand up to about 58 for a slightly posher one. And he's got to spec his tonight, which is very exciting. So I've told him to get it in yellow. I don't know if it comes in yellow, but yeah. It looks quite nice, it's quite rugged. It's kind of mixing the old, uh, the old Defender with the G-Wagon. Looks pretty cool. This, I guess, has got all the Sahara Desert Erection Club stuff on it. Ladders, bars, all-terrain tires. It's quite a cool looking thing. Inside, it's got a few nice little touches, actually. A few bits of uh, cloth trim. Hang on, let me brighten you up. A few bits of cloth trim, so it's super dark. And then all the cool little aircraft style knobs and stuff, which my camera is going to refuse point blank to focus on there and the toot button on the horn so you can give people a little pop rather than a full-on honk. It's quite a nice step up into it. It feels like a proper serious thing. I think the uh, production one's going to have airbags or something. But yeah, this is just an American test car. Sorry, it's so dark. But yeah, there you have it, Ineos Grenadier. Quite like it. I know it's gone through quite a lot of trouble as a company building them in Britain, then building them in France. I think there's being built in an old smart factory. Uh, Smart has gone off to China and Ineos has jumped in. So it's going to be built by people who know how to build cars, which is quite important. Oh God, it's another not a van. It's the easiest police car in the world to outrun. Toyota Corolla Hybrid. Police car. It's on steels though, so it gets bonus points for looking cool, I guess. And with the Ukrainian floor, it is Toyota. Land Cruiser commercial. It's just something cool, isn't it? About a three-door Land Cruiser it should be on steel wheels. I'm sure you can probably get it on steel wheels. I don't actually know anything about these. I've never driven a Land Cruiser, but I've got a few mates who own them and they love them. And they'll probably think that the new one is a bit too glitzy and a bit too chintzy. I was chatting to a local farmer the other day who's got one and he said he'd be scared to use the new one off-road because it's too shiny. But yeah, 33 grand on the road for the commercial one. I think it's pretty cool. I just like three-door off-roady things. Did I say roady? I did. This has to win the Best in Show Award for most ridiculously over-engineered piece of stuff. Look at this. I presume it's a lift, but it's got a very, very big recovery truck on it. I wonder if that could lift my Greg Sausage Drill addiction. Probably not. I don't think anything can. Not sure I'd want to go under it. I think I feel like it's going to crush me and kill me. I like big trucks. It's just something very cool about a massive orange six-wheel truck, isn't there? I'm such a child. Such a cool thing. Definitely wouldn't fit in my dogging lay-by, would it? I don't think I can book one of those into review. It's nice to see the full range of Kesha products. I need one of these to get all the encrusted baby food off my dining room floor. That'd be quite useful. Oh, it's only 12 and a half grand plus VAT. Might sell my KTM and get one of these. It'll probably improve my life. Okay, this is probably the most important van of the show. It's the new E-Transit, an electric transit. And as we all know, the transit van is massively, massively popular. Uh, backbone of Britain, I think, isn't it? All those delivery drivers, ambulances, etc., etc. So yeah, this has got 200 miles of electric range. There's also an E-Transit Custom that's just been announced as well. So yeah, quite a big range, I guess, has got to cope with carrying loads of stuff. There's a 260 horsepower version as well, uh, which sounds exactly what we need, doesn't it? Like to terrorize the streets of Britain, delivery drivers with really fast electric vans. Uh, there's also a 180 horsepower version as well. On the inside, it's a bit dark, but I'll try and show you. It's obviously got no gear knob because it is electric. So you've just got a rotary gear selector. Ford's new Sync 4 infotainment system. A big point of this is it's got loads of telematics and cool stuff that it can do. Uh, slightly concerning though is the step at the back. I'm not a van person, but to me that looks a fair bit higher because it's got the batteries under it than a regular transit. But I guess you need to keep the ground clearance 
of the regular one, so the batteries have got to go some way. You can kind of see it best from around the side. Yeah, it's just a bit more of a step up than into a regular transit, I think. It just looks a bit, a bit thick, I believe the kids say. But anyway. Right, so there we have it. That was the commercial vehicle show here at the NEC. Sorry, it's a bit of a random video. I just fancied seeing what's going on in the world of commercial vehicles. And it seems to be the big things are electrification and Chinese brands coming over that I've never heard of. Uh, but to be fair, I don't know much about vans. So that might not be new news. And obviously, I want a Ranger Raptor as well. But anyway, hopefully this has been vaguely interesting. Uh, if the sound quality was abysmal, then I apologise. And I'll see you next time for another slightly more useful video with less men in high -vis jackets in it. Goodbye. It costs £17 to get out of this car park. I mean, I don't know on what planet that is acceptable, but this car park has probably got, what, 5,000 cars in it? That's a tidy profit. I had to find a trucker to give sexual favours to just to be able to afford it. It's ridiculous.